This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotato.com. Hey, listen! All right, you guys, podcast time. Make it so. It's me, Mario. I'm Batman. Strong am I with the force. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? You're a wizard, Harry. And welcome to World War G episode 190. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. And I'm Colton. So usually what we do on uh, every 10 episodes is we do Marvel films. Yes. But this episode's a bit different uh, because we had Salt Lake Comic Con happen a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of doing the Marvel film, we are going to talk about that and just kind of do our normal episode and then we'll probably do the marvel film next week there you go so so um right at the top here uh, I, w- I wanted to bring something up so like i said uh the salt lake comic con i know it's called salt lake fanex comic convent whatever yeah i yeah. still call it salt lake comic con yeah you also still call it the delta center as well right? but don't say sue me because they might yeah i know <laughs> um and so that Friday, AJ, you and I were walking around. Yeah. And I happened to mention that, <clears throat> oh, you know, I think I actually might try my hand at stand up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just casually, I've, I've been thinking about it, um, been gathering thoughts and material stuff. Material and material kind of together. Yeah. And you just, you just mentioned that, oh, you've done stand up. That you've actually done it like what five times? Yeah, somewhere, yeah and you've actually times. opened for people. Um, only for one person. And so I did it a couple of times because at Wise Guys they'll have open mic here yeah. in Ogden. Um, so I've done it a couple of times and it was kind of fun. Uh, I had one heckler that I kind of put in his place, which was like <laughs> awesome. I mean, I got a high five from a couple other people. But... So okay, so what 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 did he say? I'm just curious. Um, like okay. what was the material you were doing? Do you remember? Um, at the time I. Don't, I mean, I was kind of just doing like a monologue, kind of a story and like setting up for kind of a punchline. Yeah. And then he, he said something off the cuff and yeah, it, it kind of got kind of crass because of my, my response to him, but it was, it was pretty dang funny and uh, like at the time. Um, well, I was just like, I guarantee that your parent, you know, your parents must have had you, um, on the freeway, right? That's where most accidents happen. And then he just got like, oh. And just kind of like, nice. I'm like, all right, unless you want to take the mic, dude, it's free uh, stand up mic. You can be next if you like, you know. <laughs> so then I just kind of went on with my stuff. But I opened a couple of times, I mean, or did it a couple of times, and they liked my stuff. So then they let me open for, a, you know, a comedian. But that was kind of like my, my only hand at it. But it was, it was so fun. So why didn't you continue? I'm just curious. Why didn't I? Yeah. Uh, t- like time, like, cause I had to work occasionally and kind of change up schedules. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It'd be fun to get back into it. It'd be yeah. fun. All right. Have you, have you already looked into it as well? No. I mean, right now it's just an idea. I've just kind of been kicking around. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just surprised we've never talked about that before. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, In four years, 190 episodes. It, it, it's kind of interesting cause you do have to find your niche or what direction you're yeah. going to go with it all. Do you already kind of know which direction or what you like to do? Um, well, like I was telling you that, that day, I've had a lot of crap happen to me. Mm-hmm. Um, over just like the last, I don't know, 10, 11 years, uh, which sounds bad because that's the time I've been married, but <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Hold yeah. on. If my calculations you can are use correct. That in your, your yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, there, there, right there's there. A, a lot of comedy you can mine from marriage, that's for sure. But all this stuff is just kind of not directly because of being married, but it's just kind of a byproduct of that. Um, like the 17 good, hours good save, that, good save. that I spent in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a story I'll, I'll share, share eventually. I've, it changes I've, you a person, right? <clears throat> <laughs> Didn't really me. Yeah. Seventeen hours. I don't think seventeen hours can really change you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Especially if you're in jail, not prison. <laughs> yeah. I've thought about doing stand up. Prison time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prison time. Um, but the, the problem is, like, I consider myself to be a funny person, but I, there's, there's a couple different types of funny. There's like, funny where you can prepare something and say it and then people laugh. Yeah. Or there's like reactive funny. And that's the kind of funny that I am. Like, I, I, I feel like I would do really good with improv comedy because I work well off of other people. Mm-hmm. But I, I just can't. I'm not creative enough to like come up with something and then say it to people and then have them laugh. Right. The, right. the hardest part about it is because like you have to keep like doing it over and over again to yourself to kind of like get a direction or an order, you know, so that it makes sense. But also, I mean, so there's like there's a storytelling art to it all, but like that it makes sense, but remembering it all mm-hmm. and kind of going into, I mean, and you can segue any way you want. It doesn't have to be like directly, you know, some of ours are not the best, but yeah, that was kind of, well, yeah. cause you say it quite a few times and then you're like, well, is that still funny? Cause I mean, I found it funny the first time, mm-hmm. but like now that I've like done it like at least like 20 times in my head or kind of gone through it all, like, I don't know. Right. You got to You got to say it every time. Like it's new. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up really quick. <clears throat> well, maybe that'll be our next thing, guys. Maybe we'll be a comedy trio. Hmm. Uh, I like this. I've, I've been thinking about taking this show on the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See if we can't get into a comedy club and charge people and see how we actually do with that. I, well, I know that we could do that one, like the venue, the loft. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one on Washington? Mm-hmm. Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, up above, like, Zigfield. Yeah, it used, to be, it used to be a comic book shop. Yeah. Now yeah. It, now they do improv, actually, ironically enough. So. Hmm. All right, well, I'll start stretching my funny bone. <laughs> how do you stretch uh, do your that funny bone? in your <laughs> own house, like, on your own time? <laughs> I don't know, but it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a break, and then we come back, we'll get to two weeks' worth of news. Yes. So we'll be back right after this. Are you feeling nostalgic about your music listening needs? Do you like the tonal quality that only a record can provide? Then go check out Lavender Vinyl, located at 123 25th Street, Ogden, Utah. Yeah, go talk to Kylie or Blake. They have a large selection of new and used records. Uh, They will also buy your old records, maybe the ones that are just sitting up there in the attic gathering dust. And if you can't find anything, they'll be more than happy to pre-order it for you. Now you can always find them at lavendervinyl at gmail.com. You can also check out their website, lavendervinyl.com, or give them a call on the phone, like a normal person, at 385-240-0336. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. And we're back. Uh, so, there is, for some reason, I haven't figured out yet why, a new Police Academy movie coming out, says Steve Gutenberg, former star of Police Academy films and former star of Hollywood in general. The movie that nobody asked for. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and also, the first one came out in 1984? Oh, geez. Yeah. And it had Steve Gutenberg, Kim Cattrall, um, other people. And it had several sequels to it, all of which just got worse and worse and worse. So why they're rebooting it, I don't know. Yeah. Because Police Academy... Well, they did the same thing with Spider-Man, if we're being honest. <laughs> with Tom, True, <laughs> but, I mean, those actually make money. What about Fantastic <laughs> and they're Four? successful. I'm talking about police academy. I'm not talking about superhero films. (laughs) (laughs) So, the police academy films, if you don't remember the premise, which I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, it's it's golden. It's the premise is a new law is passed that anybody, any private citizen, can become a police officer, which is stupid because 
any private citizen can become a police officer if you pass the academy test. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. not a that's not a thing. Um and and I I'm, imagine there's more training involved as well though. Well yeah, we have to go to the police academy. Yeah. And yeah, which what they do, which again, that's why it makes no sense. Um <clears throat> so there's this ragtag group of police officers and then there's a big riot that happened in the city and it's up to them to stop it. Anyway, So, if you're into really crappy, dumb comedies that have ridiculous sequels that no one wants to see, you know, the Police Academy will be coming out. Yes! I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be Although, it's going to be horrible because the trailers are going to be awesome and look funny and we're like, oh, we're going to give that a chance and then we're going to go see it and then it's going to be a disappointment. But guys, what if? What if it's actually great? If it is, I... I, Look, I'm not... I'm not saying that it shouldn't be good. Every movie should be good. Try to make a good film, and if it is, fantastic. But it's doubtful. It is doubtful. It's it's a, a big task. Yes. Um, with the right cast, right? Channing Tatum. Well, and, <laughs> and the thing is... Get the whole crew back from, like, 21 Jump Street. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that they have to... I don't know if they'll keep the same plot or everything. It's like I said, that plot makes absolutely no sense. So... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know don't why. About it. I don't know why it's coming out. Troy's I... head is about to explode. If they do Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill, <clears throat> I'll be down to watch it. See, all this is teasers to other stories <laughs> coming up, yeah, by go. the way. Um, so, in less... Uh, like happy news. Okay, I, I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion on this. <laughs> I don't know. The, 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 is this less happy? The depressing is the same in both <laughs> of these stories, I think. Family family um, poses slain teenage um, teens body with PlayStation and Doritos at his funeral. Have you seen this kind of growing trend? No, I, I mean besides this one that you shared with us. No, um, I've actually seen this a couple of times. Like with the, their grandmother, they like to smoke, and she'll be like sitting in a chair with a cigarette, a pack of cigarettes, and I, or whatever they like to do in yeah. life. They kind of like basically it's like what you'd put on the headstone, but just. On the person mm-hmm. themselves. So yeah, so this guy would be like, I don't know, I don't know his Got name. It. Let's call him oh, no, no, uh, Stephen Renard uh, Matthews. Okay. Mm-hmm. So instead of saying Renard Matthews, uh, he loved to play video games on his tombstone. They actually did that in the funeral parlor. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I, I like it's weird, but like I'll glance by this picture and then I just want to like get it off my screen, like as you, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like unsettling a little bit that they're that they're dead. Not, I and mean, I don't even like people like looking at people in caskets. Like it creeps the heck out of me when I see people walk up and actually like kiss the deceased. I'm like mm. the only time I've done that. The only time that I I like seeing people in caskets is when oh. they like family no members that I know that have passed away is when they weren't healthy when they were living, and you could tell that. You know, something was going on. Yeah. But then when they they pass away and they get prepared for the viewing, you know, all of that goes away and they look peaceful and... For the most part, I mean, if it's done right, but then, like, you -hmm. you remember them as they were in life and then you see them there and they look, like, nothing alike. Mm -hmm. They kind of look... It's true. They do look different. Yeah. I've I've seen it both where they do look the same and they do look different, um... You know, in the past few years, I've been to a whole lot of funerals. Mm-hmm. And for this example, is a bit right here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> How many funerals have you been to? The well, that's the I've deal with funerals. <laughs> no, what's the difference between an Irish funeral and an Irish wedding? One less drinker. Wow. There you go. I got a joke for every occasion. Um, you say? I was going to say, um, so I, like, for example, at my father in law's funeral, looked nothing like him. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And, well, there's reasons for that. A lot of reconstruction Milk had to be done. But, yeah. Um, and then I went to my grandparents' funeral, um, particularly particularly my grandma, and she looked exactly the same. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, being an older person, it's easier to have them lo- remain looking old, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Whereas with somebody's younger, you have to, you know, pretty much pump their 
that formaldehyde in that there to push their skin out mm-hmm. and make sure everything's all nice and smooth and yeah yeah you ever seen that done by the way that process uh, i have yeah so have I. to a funeral home um okay a little random insight into my weird psyche um i won't ever drink water at a drink like in a in a funeral home like any water like at all well because you're afraid it's tainted about. by death <laughs> Yeah, the pipes are like running past corpses and stuff is what I imagine. So if there's a drinking fountain, I'll never use it at a funeral home. Like never. I would. Ra- I'd rather die than use it. Well, 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 there you go. <laughs> You're in a funeral home, <laughs> so good place to do it. Good timing. Yeah. Um. So the real question is, if this were, if one of this you guys, if funeral? you guys passed away and it was what your funeral, like what would your family be doing with your corpse? Oh, AJ, I imagine they would be hooking you up with the, some animatronic thing. Yeah, it'd be and like pirates some of the Caribbean. rocks and stuff, and they would have you hiking <laughs> <laughs> because that's pretty much. I mean, hiking, video games, and movies. That's all I see on Facebook, pretty much. That, that's oh, that sums me up in a nutshell. <laughs> see, I was thinking it would be pretty much like this guy minus the Doritos. Yeah, but one hand would be a controller, the other hand would be texting some girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I could see that for you. For me, now do I get to? Do we get to pick each other's, or do we like? If you want, like, no. If you want to pick mine, that's fine. I could see. I don't know. You sitting in front of like, or actually, they would get a movie theater um, seat and have you sitting in that. Oh, that'd be awesome, right? (laughs) And then like my big popcorn and my coke. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was thinking. Well, your Pepsi, like just chilling there, right? And um, yeah, I'd probably see that and like. Comic books or something. Or maybe you drawing a picture of you drawing your picture of you drawing your picture. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Inception right there. Mm-hmm. Uh. And I was thinking like me like at this table in front of a microphone. Mm-hmm. That's been a lot of my life lately. Colton. Oh, let me see. Colton. <laughs> Big I'm Colton, a bit of a wild card, guys. Yeah. I, I'm hard to pin down. Uh. I could see uh, posing you in front of a computer mm-hmm. playing... World of Warcraft. I mean, that's that's how I want to die. So <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't even have to do anything. Yeah. yeah, I would. They would just make sure that the what's it called when you stiffen up? Rigor mortis. Rigor mortis. Yeah. Just wait. Well, and then they don't have to move me. And they just take every. Take just everything. lift you up. Yeah. Then then move you over another mm-hmm. chair. <laughs> the same exact computer chair. That's funny. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I this trend needs to stop. Whatever it is. It so. is. It's worse than people taking Snapchats with. If, did you? Ooh, do you remember yeah. that? <clears throat> that was a thing. Yeah, taking Snapchat, Snapchats with the corpse, with the filters on. The, yeah, that was uh, that's too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. My, I'm always morbidly fascinated by this. I don't know why. I have a very morbid curiosity. Um, well, and I want to be cremated too. So, like, they could put a pile of ashes on my computer desk and <laughs> put some Throw headphones it on it. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In lighter news. Um, well. Well. <laughs> uh, let's see if I go to the right, the right story here. Yeah. Um, Dave Batista unsure of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 return as Drax. And it's warranted. Yeah. I mean, he's been very vocal, I would say, out of all the cast. He's been very vocal about this whole James Gunn thing, Disney's decision to fire him. He's been very um, vocal of, of the fact that if they don't at least use his script, he's out. He's gone. He's done. I agree with him. Yeah. I wouldn't do it either. I mean, he has enough money to retire, for sure. Yeah, he's pretty set. And I mean, I think... You know, you, you spend two movies with a, a director. You get to know that director. You get to know how that director works. Well, uh, he, gives, he gave him his break, too, which is a really did. important yeah. factor. In yeah, that. yeah. And, I mean, he, and he made him huge. He made him a big star. And, and so the fact that it seems like Disney, Disney doesn't even care about that and just kicked him to the curb. You know, now if you're making a third, you have to deal with a new director, a new set of, or a way of, a uh, new way of doing things. Mm-hmm. You have to get, you know. It's going to be the opposite of what happened chemistry. to Thor. Yeah. Because Thor, the first two movies were crap, but then the third one was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I I wish someone was doing this with uh, Dave because, and we're on a first name basis, by the way. <laughs> sure. Dave. Yeah. Um, because yeah. it's hard because he is not the star of the show. He's a he's a B level character in that movie, like compared to Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is the main character, obviously. Yes, right. Um, and I think I that mean, if Chris, he, if Chris Pratt was like, doing this, there's yeah. no way they could replace him as Star Lord. Well, maybe after what happened in Infinity War, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't care. It would just be a snap, you know. It would be pretty. Mm-hmm. Nice. But <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I wish they were all teaming up together to get James rather Cameron than back. just being one voice mm-hmm. crying from the dust. <laughs> <laughs> Good. There's two references you managed to get in there. <laughs> Can we go for three? <laughs> um, um, yeah. It it seems kind of it seems kind of strange, and he is unfortunately he's replaceable. Yeah. Know? Well, I don't know. He's the only one besides Chris Pratt that has a physical presence too. I mean, mm-hmm. Groot has just been Diesel saying Groot. Yeah. And he doesn't even, I don't even think he does the motion capture for it. He doesn't. And no. Rocket Raccoon, um, what's his name, doesn't do the motion capture for that Bradley either. Cooper. Nope. Yeah, he just does the voice. That's and we don't Sean even know if Gamora's back. coming back because she wasn't killed with the snap. Yeah. That's true. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I guess, well, I guess we'll only, time will tell, right? And I wanted, I wanted to see him at, Comic Con, but I never did get get the chance to. Yeah, I didn't even see him over sitting out at his booth. No, me neither. Yeah, busy wrestling, <laughs> probably. Um, LG. Okay, so I sent the story over that LG displays an eighty-eight <clears throat> inch eight K TV. <clears throat> like, it looks pretty dang remarkable as far like visually and aesthetically. Like, this is an amazing looking TV, but at the same time, we're just barely making the transition into 4K, and it seems a little preemptive. I know they don't even have, like, a price tag on it, or nobody can purchase. This isn't, like, available for purchase, but this is the direction that we can already see that it's going. And it just kind of, I don't know, I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion on it. Are we going, like, way too fast, or? I think, yes. I think it's a bit excessive to do 8K, but another reason for doing an 8K TV is because right now 4K TVs are so expensive, the nice ones at least. Uh-huh. And I think the only reason to release an 8K version is to make the 4K versions more affordable for the average person. I will never own an 8K TV. I will say that right now yeah. because there's no point. Yeah. What What is the point of of owning a TV with such a high resolution? It looks cool. I I could see it being used as far as like um, warfare is concerned. I mean, not that I'm like you know for war or anything, but like or you mean just for video also, games, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. No, no, like okay, so using it in technology to um, also in like hospitals, mm-hmm. I could see them utilizing this, and it's more practical. But mm-hmm. as far as like for the daily consumer, it seems way excessive. And it seems like they're almost trying to do something like what they've done with like iPhones and with every other phone where they come out with a new one that's just a little bit better and a little bit brighter, you know, every well, six months. It's double the K. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a pretty heavy, like, that's a big task to be able to do. Yeah. Well, and the problem with 4K TVs is you have to have something that outputs 4K or 8K, I mean, 8K to those things. Like mm-hmm. they, have, they have 4K cameras, they have 4K you know, Apple TV and things like that. But I don't know if they're going to make the jump to 8K for those things. If they do, that's great. Uh, eventually. I, I mean, I could see them doing that. But I feel like virtual reality is <coughs> going to take over before that happens, and I don't think it's possible to have 8K in a virtual reality headset. Oh, that'd be scary. <laughs> like, I mean, that'd look, like, real. Mm-hmm. My feeling is, you know, if you if you want to make this 8k screen that's great but i think there there are better things that i think people could be doing with their time Mm -hmm. um i mean yeah make an 8k screen and like you said let's put it in hospitals right you know uh so they can so doctors get a clear picture and 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 that sort of thing it's a practical use if you're just making it just to make it oh this is going to make our video games look cool then you know it, it seems like Technology is really the only thing that we're really rushing progress on. You know, everything else takes years and years and years to advance, but technology, man, you know, I think about 
10 years ago, well, the it, iPhone barely came out. Yeah. iPhone 1. But but they're not, like, <clears throat> the problem that we run into is, like, with technology, it's not like you're recreating something. There's very few new, brand new ideas that nobody's ever thought of before. Yeah, they're all innovations there. now. Yeah. They're just, like, making it better and improving on the original idea. So that's kind of the problem you run into is because people are like, well, how can I make this better? You know, and then they'll go to work at it, you know? Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, and it seems like, okay, we have a 4K TV. Let's let's make an 8K TV. And then all of a sudden they have that and it's just. So does it go to 16 is the next one? Uh, maybe. Oh, 32. Geez. 64. Yeah. 64K TV. Jeez. <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't feel like we'll be on this planet by that time. We'll be gone. <laughs> that's that's a little like a little scary. Um, no, uh, because of space travel, not because of the planet. Oh, will. okay. I was just like, oh man, he's like <laughs> he's calling the zombie apocalypse. Solar flares or solar flares They're or real. something's gonna. Happen. The reason I know space travel or time travel or whatever does not exist because I have not come back from the future to, to talk, talk to, to myself. Yeah. So I know, given my personality, I would do that. I totally would do that as well. Like, okay, so actually, we can take a second right here, and if time travel really does exist, like, now's the time. Come back to this moment. Nope. All right. It's not, yeah, it's not real. I didn't know. <laughs> as like, as oh, if, I see like, what you did. I walk I in the door, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Does that make sense? I see. So you're saying you come back right now. Now. Guys, how freaked out would you be? If oh, you that'd, be ter- <laughs> that'd be terrifying, like, but awesome at the same time. Like an, like an older you. you know, I was going to say an adult you, but I'm like, well, I guess we're technically are, you know. Yeah. Or a younger mentally. you. I mean, by the time we have time travel, we might have, you know, the technology to reverse aging. Oh, well. And man. we would be buff, too, because if they have that technology, they right? can just make people buff. If you oh, yeah, to. absolutely. It's a pill. Yeah. But then when everybody is buff, no one is. Yes, that's no true, Syndrome. Bit. That's right. But it's I the was, syndrome syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Henry Henry Cavill, however you want to say it, uh, will lead Netflix Witcher series. Um, and I don't know how I feel about this. He's not old enough. No, he's like he's kind of a younger dude. And he's not gruff. Like he doesn't have. He looks too Superman-ish. You know, <laughs> like looks There's too purty. Like. Yeah, they can they can gray him up, and they can Ben throw Affleck. Some scars I think would be a better Witcher than Henry Cavill. Uh, ben Affleck, I think he's too big. This dude's a little bit like scrawnier. I mean, you can get Hen- scrawny. Henry Cavill's not oh, exactly buff, a scrawny. No, no, I mean he's dude. he's yeah, but like th- as far as thinner, you know oh. what I mean? Like if you've been surviving out in the wilderness for years, you know you're not gonna. I see. <laughs> that plump well and and this is something that henry wanted i mean he's been vying for this yeah and so you know i I think him as well yeah Yeah. well i call him hank (laughs) and and so i think you know he's gonna do hank is gonna do everything he can in this role because this is something that he's been pushing for i mean if you follow him on like instagram he's been wanting to do the even, Witcher series. Even before, like, it even was announced mm-hmm. that they were going to do that? Yeah. Huh. Now I feel like we just need to start doing that, right? Until they choose us to, to do these certain roles. Um, it's like, hey, I've been really, like, buying for this for, like, for years, <laughs> and let's make it happen. <laughs> right? Uh, I'll, I I can vibe for the, the, the next person to talk Daffy Duck. In a new oh. Looney Tunes cartoon. Yes. I could do it. Hey, I believe me. I believe me, I can. I did. I did recently reading Shakespeare. Um, okay. So Mattel launches film studio for He-Man, Barbie, and other films. And it was only a matter of time. Um, the toy maker Mattel will launch a film division named Mattel Films which will focus on developing movies based on their various toy lines, which include Masters of the Universe, Hot Wheels, Barbie, Thundercats, and more. They're trying to resurrect uh, Toys R Us. That's Mm. what's going to happen. Yeah. They'll bring it back from the dead, along with our childhood. (laughs) Huzzah! (laughs) Um, I, I don't know. They've already done it with cars. 
How are, how's Hot Wheels going to be much different? Hot Wheels basically just, if it's a live action film, it's basically, what, is it going to be a racing film? Yeah, like, Another they tried Fast to do that with need, need for Speed, and that was yeah. just stupid. I kind of like the Need for Speed movie, actually. Really? I did. With Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I kind of, I kind of, I think I saw it a couple times. Um, but I don't, well, I have, can't. Like, those certain moves, like, we're going to have to do this jump. Let's call it out. Yeah. And then they do the actual, yeah. yeah. I don't know, and I can't see how this will be good. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like I can't see a live action He Man movie actually being good, unless they went the Lego direction. You know, kind of just made fun of them, poked fun of themselves, and just kind of. Well, and if they did it animated, I see doing that or yeah. CG or something like that. But if so they did live action, action, no, no. I'm, Live action Hot Wheels. They you, tried that once. It didn't work. They just need to do claymation and have Seth Green be in charge of it. I would watch a robot chicken He-Man movie. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't done that yet, honestly. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Shall we take a break? Yes, let's take a break. And then uh, when we come back, we got a few other stories to get to. And then more stuff to get to. And then more stuff after that. So stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> On the historic streets of Ogden, there are two kinds of people, readers and non-readers. Here's where you can find their stories. Booked on 25th Street, located at 147 Historic 25th Street, Ogden, Utah, 84401. Yeah, stop by and say hi to our friend Marcy. You can pick up a new or used book, or you can sell your own used books. That's right, you can get 10% store credit on what they can sell the book for. Stop in and say hi, or call them at 801-529-7720. You can find them on Facebook at facebook.com slash booked on 25th, or you can email them at marcy at booked on 25th.com, or visit their website, booked on 25th.com. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. And we're back. So, uh, Domino's, uh, they they set out this thing, like, and they kind of made a big deal about it, that they were going to do Domino's free pizza for life, you know, for any customer that gets a tattoo of their logo uh, on them. It's a mistake. Right? Because they didn't realize, they started it, they tried it over in Russia to see how it would actually work and if anybody would actually do it, you know, just kind of thinking, oh, maybe like... One in, you know, a million or something would, yeah. would do this. No, they eventually had to limit it because within the first, like, couple of days, like, they had... So, did you take a look at some of these different tattoos? Some of them are kind of creative mm-hmm. um, with, like, the actual Domino's pizza slice in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, but within the first couple of days, they had so many people, like, just from Russia, that they eventually had to limit it down to the mm-hmm. first 350 people <clears throat> that did this. <laughs> and so, so Troy, yes, as someone who has recently decided that they want to get tattoo, yes, if you got a tattoo of the Domino's logo to get, uh, or if you were offered free pizza for mm-hmm. life, Is would you like, get a tattoo of the Domino's logo? If it was, if it was one a week, like, yes, like, and that's someone who just decided yeah. that they want to get a tattoo. <laughs> Right? Domino's, you made a really big mistake Bad offering mistake. this. Yeah. I would get a Domino's tattoo on my face <laughs> if I could get 100 a hundred pizzas a, a year for it's free. It's teardrop Domino's yeah. like logo kind of well, thing. Well, and it's just a little blue and white Domino. I mean, you can you can get that anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's an easy it's an easy tattoo to get. Right. I would put a ch- tattoo of Domino's on my child. They need to do one to for get like free pizza for life. <laughs> <laughs> You're inking up your little girl like yeah. there. They made a miscalculation there, especially yeah. in Russia, right? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, it was funny. just it just made me laugh, and I, I thought we had to I had to talk about it, especially with like the whole Troy getting a tattoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then I mean KFC was doing something similar. And they said that they would give someone, what was it? I think free KFC. I don't know if it was for life, but it was for a while. If you named your child Harland, um, and they were born on Harland Sanders' birthday. Huh. 
Yeah. And eventually somebody like... Well, and what they didn't tell people was, is if you do that, you send in proof, and then your name goes into like this big pool, and then they pick out of that one person. Oh, jeez. So then your kid is now stuck with the name Harland, and you don't have any free KFC. That's so lame. (laughs) Yeah. KF them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. KFU. (laughs) Um, Ben Affleck out as DC's Batman following Henry Cavill's uh, rumor Superman exit. What the heck is happening to DC, guys? Okay. Um, Give us the skinny. Yeah. I have a hard time believing any of this. Oh. Because the whole Henry Cavill thing, it was all, it comes from just rumors. It comes from speculations. He was doing negotiations Mm -hmm. with Warner Brothers. Nothing is final. As a matter of fact, he posted something on his Instagram, speaking of that, with him holding up, a video of him holding up a Superman action figure. Yeah. Which says to me, he's still Superman. Plus, he had a Kryptonite Gym t-shirt on. And then this, so this whole Ben Affleck thing, we've been going back and forth with Affleck. Is he going to be Batman? Is he not going to be Batman for what? Five years now? Yeah, before the movies even came out. (laughs) Five, four years now. And so I have a hard time believing any of this. Um, And if Ben Affleck is out, it's not because Henry Cavill's rumor Superman exit. I think it's because it's his rampant alcoholism. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and, and and the fact that he's currently in rehab. That might be a some, big some help. Yeah. No, they need to have a new Batman movie where it's just like him like super drunk and <laughs> trying to fight crime and stuff and yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, I take all this all these DC rumors with with a grain of salt. If there was going to be Okay, so say he does step down because he would be fantastic. Ben Affleck would do a great job as Batman if they're doing The Dark Knight Returns. That like the they've done two DC uh, universes done two movies already on it and they've been fantastic they're like batman hasn't been seen for 10 years the city's like going to hell in a handbasket he comes back and kind of puts these mutant guys in place gets a new gets a new robin and then because of all this going down the (gasps) joker this is just it in a nutshell the joker comes out because he was just kind of like docile and just sitting in like almost like a retirement home he was comatose he's kind of a vegetable Yeah. yeah And because Batman came back, he came back. And mm-hmm. there's this one scene that is so crazy that I'd love to see, like, in a live-action movie. Well, it's, it's bad, but he, he um, the Joker's being chased by Batman, and he runs into this carnival area mm-hmm. and goes through the Tunnel of Love and just starts shooting up people. Yeah. And then, like, Batman ends up killing the Joker, and the Joker, it, as he's, like, laughing, it's kind of, like, uh, reminiscent of the killing joke, but, like, Batman basically goes bad you know what i mean like so he's he breaks batman i would love i would love to see a hardcore batman movie Mm -hmm. where he has no limitations on killing people or guns or anything like that and he's just fed up either like that or like okay so either an old eight like batman where he needs to use rely on like other weapons and Mm -hmm. stuff or like a really young one where he hasn't really you know found his moral compass exactly yeah like batman year one Mm -hmm. that comic book yeah yeah, um, yeah. Dark Dark Knight Returns would be a really good live action film. They've made an animated version for for Batman. I mean, for Ben Affleck. Yeah, because he seems a little bit old. But if they did, okay. So say Ben Affleck does step down, I almost feel like they need to bring in a younger Batman mm-hmm. for um, sure, just so that they can do some of like Year One and some of these other ones. And actually, I don't know. He's going to be around for a while. Sign him to like a six movie contract, or like at least a, at least like a three kind of a deal. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard the names of like Jake Gyllenhaal tossed around. I've also heard John Hamm tossed around. Both are too old for me. Like, I, yeah. I would like to Krasinski? go the route that. Krasinski, yeah, I've heard, I've I think. His name, but. I think he's been, he's busy doing other things currently. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, like I said, I, I just take all that DC stuff, just wait and, See what happens. A little bit, we've been kind of spoiled with Marvel, where they've done such a fantastic job with keeping. The, I mean, there's only been a couple of changes, right? Mm-hmm. DC can't find their groove for whatever reason. They cannot hold on to an actor to save their life. Yeah. 
It's like, well, all that movie tanked. Oh, let's not do another one. Let's like change up people. That's the problem. It's got to be like, it's got to be the director, or perhaps it's got to be, you know, I don't know. Well, I think another reason for that, and we when we've talked about the problems with DC, you know, to death over over the years, but. <clears throat> They're getting these really big stars. They're getting people like Ben Affleck and Will Smith and people like that who aren't comfortable signing multi-picture deals. Right. They don't want to do that. Um, that's one of the reasons that, like, I mean, going back to Marvel, Ed Norton dropped out. They didn't want to do Hulk anymore because of that. But these these really famous people, well, they don't... Robert Downey Jr. Well... They kind of went to that. Well, and he was kind of a special case because his career at the time was kind of on the rocks anyway. Yeah. And so, you know, a guaranteed multi-picture deal, you know, that's guaranteed work. But for someone like a, like a Will Smith or a Ben Affleck, you know, those are guys that, that don't want to be held down and contractually obligated to do these films. Um, want to go off and so do, many stipulations yeah, on it. Want to go off and do other things? They want to, you know, have other be, side projects. I yeah. think I think that's the problem: is they're getting these big name, big actors. stars. Yeah, they need to start small. Mm-hmm. Like Robert Downey Jr. was huge twenty years ago. Yes, and he was on. I Marvel saw that he was on the way up, and they're like, "Okay, we're going to snag." They seen him in like Sherlock, mm-hmm. right? Sherlock was after Iron Man. What was it? No, yeah. what was the what was the kind of movie that they'd seen him in that kind of. Made him make that decision. Uh, probably, um, he, that film he did with Val Kilmer, it was like in 2005, um, I'll think of it, anyway. Yeah, Yeah, I just think they're starting too big. I agree. Yeah. I I mean, Henry Cavill, he wasn't big. No, he wasn't. And that's what, I mean, he's been in a lot of movies since then. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of catapulted him to, to Mm -hmm. fame. And, you know, and look at um, Gal Gadot as one woman. Yeah. She wasn't really big at the time. She'd been in a few Fast and Furious films. That's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. And so I think for her, signing this multi-picture deal to play Wonder Woman, I think that's kind of, you know, um, kind of your golden cow, basically. Yeah. And, you know, and look and look at that Wonder Woman film. It was fantastic. It's one of their best, um, if not their best. Yeah. And I, I think you're right, though. I think you need to go. Sorry, a little bit smaller. So yeah, like you forget, can... you know, forget people like Joaquin Phoenix and Ben Affleck and Will Smith and these guys <coughs> go to up and coming actors. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's where your bread and butter is. Look at Ezra Miller, who's playing Flash. That film has been on the rocks, but he he's still in in to play him. Yeah, you know. Yep. Anyway, huh. um. <clears throat> so this <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. It's being touted as the saddest Easter egg of all time. Uh, so a lot of people have been playing the new Spider-Man game. As have I. I'm twenty five percent done with it. I'm jealous that you have it. I've been able to get it yet. It's it's so it's so much fun. Um, and within this video game, there's this little Easter egg. If you go, there's a marquee on a theater, and it says, "Maddie, will you marry me?" Well, apparently, this comes from a guy who contacted, um, yeah, this guy named Tyler at Top Notch One Two One Zero on Twitter. He said. Um, he said at Evan Filar Filarsa Filarka. Creators of the game. Creators of the game. Uh, I need your help. This may be selfish, but I'm ready to propose to my girlfriend and want to do it in a big way. Uh, is there any way you can put an Easter egg of Madison Will You Marry Me anywhere in the game? And the guys, the creators of the game said, Sure. Yeah. We'll do that for you. And so they did, and it's in there. Uh, problem is, weeks before this game came out, they broke up. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. She dumped yeah. him. She yeah. dumped him. And so, and so it's, it's a, it's a harsh reminder of <laughs> <laughs> their once now lost love. Yeah. That's like you never get a tattoo of, you know, a significant other, no. or your girlfriend, no, or, you never. know, put their name on you. It's like, 
dooming it, basically. I wonder if he's not playing the game because of this. He doesn't want to swing past this I Easter know. egg. <laughs> and start see breaking the tear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, okay, so just a little bit about the game really quickly. Yeah. Um, you're going, you're going around, and it's pretty cool, because you're seeing, like, all these different people. Like, the mechanics... Uh, are so much fun when you're like flying around the city and it sounds so epic because every time you take off like it has this dynamic music that's playing mm-hmm. Um, you're basically going around and I mean you can do the story but you also have all these different side quests that you can go find backpacks that you've kind of scattered throughout the whole city that you've left there and it's really cool because you actually get like when you open up whatever the ins is in the backpack it's yeah. an old like it like a lot of the times it was oh this was the first like picture of me and uncle ben or oh this was the letter that i wrote for mary jane or this is when she you know and like there's all these different like story things and it's really kind of interesting so i found myself actually going around and i've already collected all 55 of them nice. just because i really i don't know, really like it but in the story you also get an opportunity to play um as mary jane in a couple of parts. Really? And there's also a Stanley like cameo. Yeah, of course. That's, yeah. That's actually pretty funny. So I wanna get that game. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's definitely worth worth playing. I would love to play it, but I don't own a PlayStation and I don't want to spend the money to buy a PlayStation just to play the game. Well, you can get that for like about ten other awesome games that you can only play. Exclusives. I bought a PS3 for the sole purpose of playing Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah. For the sole pur- That's the only reason I got the game or the, the console. So I'm certainly not above that. Luckily, I already have a PS4, so mm-hmm. I will get the game yeah. eventually. <clears throat> I do wish it came out on Xbox, though, so that I could play it on my computer. I think they'll eventually do that, where they just wait a year, and then they, they did the same thing with, like, uh, Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. They'll just wait a year, and then they, they might. Like, but I feel play. like since the rights for Spider Man are exclusively owned by Sony, Sony yeah. that's not gonna happen. I don't think they're yeah. no, I don't think they're gonna go to Xbox. Probably not. Um speaking about uh, speaking of Spider Man, uh the Venom movie has been like officially announced that it's going to be one hour and fifty two minutes, as well as it's going to be rated P G thirteen. Yeah. Lame. Right? I thought we were going to yeah. finally get like a really dark and gritty and rated R Venom movie. And here, I'm thinking they're doing this. Like, this is just my guess, but I believe it's because they want to eventually include Spider-Man. Or potentially. That's that's probably that's probably true, but but um, Fox doesn't seem to have any problems doing a rated R Deadpool. You know, eventually he'll probably be integrated into the MCU. Yeah. So they don't have any such worries. Right. Um, so what's their hang up with this? I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it may be just, they just want to bring in as many people as they can. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. They don't want to, they don't want to scare people off or have yeah. people not see it because it's rated R. Yeah. They want, cause no one's going to not see it because it's not rated R. Right. Right. Exactly. Oh. And they're afraid that if it is rated R, that people aren't going to like, you know, they'll, they'll be scared to bring their kids and, and that sort of thing. It is true, especially for a movie that's based on. It. I mean, Deadpool is an antihero, but not so yeah. not as much as Venom is. Mm-hmm. So, well, Venom can be more classified as a villain. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna like detract because the only reason, okay, the main reason I would like to see it rated R is because of then it would be a lot cooler deaths. Mm-hmm. A lot like a cool, lot cooler fight, more, fighting scenes. More graphic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you're actually going to see him utilize some of his abilities where he can turn those tentacles like Into like daggers spikes, and dice, daggers, and actually I want to see somebody bite arms off like it in in that movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. in it, <laughs> in, in it, and when it was in it. Yeah. What movie are you talking about? Uh, it. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Well, it, it's <laughs> not necessarily for like the vi- uh, like it's not for like the language because whatever, but it's for the violence so that they yeah. don't have to shy away or he goes to stab them and it just cuts away just a little bit off the screen so you can't see it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. I think as long as they don't show blood in excess amounts, it can still be PG thirteen. Yeah. There. There's so many ridiculous rules. The MPAA. Are they worried that it's not going to do as well as they think? So that's why they don't want to like limit it to yeah. limit their clientele yeah. base. Sure, it's exactly. I mean, because as soon as you make something rated R, you literally cut the the viewer base in half. Not with Deadpool or Logan. That's true, but there was so much hype around those movies. 
That's true, and there's been a lot of hype with this movie. Not as much. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like more low key, kind of flying under the radar, like a Wonder Woman. People are cautiously optimistic. Yes, about this movie. they're they're not as. It's not like with Deadpool, where we're like, yeah. this movie's going to be awesome. Yeah. And it was. Uh-huh. It totally ex- exceeded my expectations. But this this movie, I'm going into it hoping that it's going to be good, not yeah. expecting it to be. Same. Yeah. I think that's that's And where they've the got problem. their reservations, they don't want to limit. Their <clears throat> and then, customers. as far as Logan goes, you had so many years of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Mm-hmm. You know, you have that giant fan base that want to see him. So it really right. didn't matter in the end when if they made it R or not. Well, well okay, then, with this one, you've got like... I mean, they're familiar at least with the uh, like Venom, the character. Yes, but right? you don't have ten years of movies of Venom movies. Tom Hardy has been in like more than yes, 10 years but not of, you know what I mean? Venom. Yeah, no, I, I not understand. the character. Yeah, and since Hugh Jackman knew this was going to be his send off, there's no way he would let it be bad. Right. He, he yeah. you know that he had a ton of sway over how that movie turned out. Yes, I'm sure he did. Yeah. I'm still cautiously optimistic, and I hope that it's good. I'll definitely see it. I th- I'm going to see it, too. I was... I, I will see it, but I, I'm still... I've got see? reservations. See? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why they're not making it R. Mm-hmm. To make sure people go. Well, I think I'd be a little bit more on board. I'd say, like, I'm at, like, 50-50. I'd probably be at about, like, 60-40 if they didn't make it R. And, and for me, I was cautious about this movie, but I don't know. The more I see it, the more I see the effects, um, mm. I think... I think it, it, this looks like dumb fun, you know? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to change the face of superhero films or anything like that, but right. I think it's going to be a movie you can go to and like, oh, that was fun. True. Hmm. All right. Speaking <clears throat> of movies, <clears throat> when we come back, we'll give our movie reviews and then Fanex or whatever yes. we're calling it. Salt Lake Comic Con, Fanex, whatever. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, actually, this... this um episode's going to be even longer because we're going to tack on the interviews that we had oh, that's at right. the end. Booyah. So this is going to be your giant size uh, World War G episode. So stay tuned. Thanks, Joy. Hi, everybody. This is Sean Ray. And John Irons. And we're the hosts of Cosmic Potato, the Super Fan Talk podcast. We're a show that has a little bit of everything. Yeah, we talk about movies and TV and cartoons, entertainment news, and every show has a different theme. That's right. We might discuss anything from our favorite bad movies to who would win in a fight between C-3PO and the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was episode 41, a classic. Uh, You can download that episode and all of our other episodes on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, We're on Podcast Addict and, of course, on our website, CosmicPotato.com. Is special guests and movie nudes and geeky nerddom and nerdy geekery and lightsabers and time lords and ninja turtles all the way down. So check out uh, Cosmic Potato, the super fan talk podcast. And we're back. So um, I saw several films since last we spoke. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Was it nice to be back to the theater? It was. It was. Um, at least for two of these. Uh, in no particular order, uh, let's talk about... I'll do the order that I saw them in. Let's do Crazy Rich Asians. Okay. Now, I've been hearing a lot about this film. Um, people are really liking it. Um, people are calling it one of the best romantic comedies ever. You know, that sort of thing. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And so I went and watched it, and... The story is there's this couple that live in New York, I think. And turns out that one of them, the guy, comes from one of the wealthiest Asian families in the world. And his the guy's friend is getting married, so he's flying over to be the best man. And so she's coming along, going to meet his family, blah, blah, blah. Well, she... Uh, it's it's the whole, she comes from a different part of the world, um, she comes from a, the wrong side of the tracks, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Family doesn't quite accept her. I don't know why people are putting this on such a high pedestal, 
because it's pretty run of the mill. Mm-hmm. It's been done before. It has. Um, I don't know if, if it's maybe because of the setting. It's in Tokyo, maybe because it's an all Asian cast. Or, I don't know, but it was. I mean, it was okay. It, it's it's it, it certainly was bland, like white rice. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's certainly watchable, 100%. I mean, it's worth a watch, I think. It's entertaining, but is it anything spectacular? Isn't that the... No, not really. The actress, um, Amanda Ling, what TV show is it? Oh, Fresh Off the Boat. Is that what she's on? That's okay. what she's on. Okay. I was trying to place her, but I almost think like, okay, in that TV show, she has three kids that are all like teenagers, or I guess one's a young adult, but... Um, for the most part, she's got older kids, mm-hmm. and he's this guy, this rich guy, seems a lot younger. Although, like Asians are really well good about like hiding their age. You know what I mean? You can't tell how old they are. Um, so that's what I was just meaning. Yeah. It seemed kind of like weird, like the whole casting to begin with. Well, and then speaking of that, there is this these two, uh, this couple behind me. They're these young white kids on a date. And they kept talking throughout the whole thing, which, one, pissed me off. And then, two, they couldn't keep track of, of who was who. Really? Yeah. And so they kept saying, okay, now, okay, is that the same girl that was with the oh, other? Geez. I'm like, really? <laughs> wow. Really? So um, out of uh, out of five, there wasn't really anything that stood out. Dollars? Grains of rice? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Out of five, I don't know. I, can't, I honestly can't think of anything. That's how like forgettable yeah. this film is. Yeah, very memorable. Yeah. So out of five, whatever. I'll uh, I'll put it at like honestly like two. You know. Okay. I mean, if you have a, if you happen to see it like at Redbox or if it comes on cable or Hulu or some, you know, check it out. But uh, it's don't, worth a couple bucks, but yeah. it's not worth a movie ticket. Yeah, don't go out of your way to see it. Is what I'm saying. <clears throat> All right, uh, and then the next one, searching. Um, this one is interesting because it's the story of uh, this guy who. Well, first of all, the, the film is all done on screens, whether it's a mobile phone, whether it's a laptop, whether it's, you know, a TV screen, whatever. You never see it not not on a particular screen, which is interesting. It's an interesting way to, to film. Um, and so the story is this guy, uh, his wife dies, and so he's raising this his daughter by himself, and she's about to get into college. And one night while he's asleep, and you kind of see it through, I think it's his laptop. He gets a phone call from his daughter, rings twice. Or no, she calls twice. I hangs don't know up. who this is. <laughs> and then next morning, he can't find her. Um, and he, he all of a sudden, she is missing. He can't find her for days. Oh, and so it becomes like this big manhunt about where his daughter is. Um, you know, he, he like opens up her Facebook, her Twitter, all of her social media. So he's asking all of her friends and it becomes this, this very frantic thing. And it, it kind of reminds me, or sounds a little bit like, um, just the way it was filmed, uh, Chronicle, you know, how that yeah. was kind of different, like Chronicle meets Taken, but yeah. like in today's, yeah. like today's, um, uh, with like, a little bit of like unfriended thrown in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it actually becomes this really interesting mystery um, and this really kind of intriguing thriller because you, you see this guy and uh, I forgot the actor's name. Uh, John Cho. John Cho. Thank you. Huh? He's uh, He plays Sulu in Star Trek. Yeah. You see him kind of start, you know, he's trying to keep things together. Then you see him kind of slowly unravel as the days go by and he starts to get, you know, more clues start to pop up and he's finding out more information and stuff like that. And you you see this guy slip into just full on panic mode. And it's really interesting. And I, until the end was revealed, I couldn't have called the, the twist. Um, I didn't see it coming. So 
I'll give it points for that, mm -hmm. for definitely for originality. So, out of uh, five um, mobile phones, I guess, or insert technology here, I'm giving it like. I'm gonna give it three and a half. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a rating. Rotten review. Tomatoes is like sitting at ninety two percent. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm gonna have to see it. This one, it, like, it would it would be kind of interesting just because. You know, he's trying to use this. I mean, I know he grew up a little bit using this technology, but having to deal with like these teenager kids yeah. who aren't helpful at all, right? Who don't like care. Right. You know what I mean? Like they're living their own lives, and they've like they're worried about like their next math test. Mm -hmm. And and there is parts that 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 does come up where you know he's panicked. And he's like, "Where's the last time he's here? Where's the last time he saw her?" And they're just like, "I don't know." Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I saw her like a party or something. I, I don't know. I, He's trying to piece this together with yeah. like stupid people. Yeah, like, yeah, that'd be way difficult. And but it's it's really good. I definitely say go go check it out. Um, I'll go throw in. I'll throw in uh, probably the nun here. Yeah, and then we'll go we'll go back. Uh, what back are you gonna home. say? It, it's probably one that's worth seeing in the theater if you're gonna see it. I would say so. Um, okay. I I saw it on my laptop. <laughs> Ironically, Ironically enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> saw it on my screen. That's hilarious. Um, I was just going to throw this one in there. Uh, the Nun. Yes. This one, I thought it was going to, because it's made for by the same people, Bloomhouse, that did Conjuring, Insidious, Sinister, and this was supposed to, they'd been building up to this for a while. You've kind of seen in the background, and that even at the end of the movie, they've kind of thrown in that there's like this nun, or like it all started from this like convent, or somewhere, like you don't know where it all began. Right, this is part of the Conjuring so this should have been right? the whole. This was supposed to be the beginning, and like you know, give you clues or like help you figure out everything else. They didn't even have like an end credit scene, which I was kind of disappointed about. Hmm. But I know it's sad, but I was disappointed about that. But this, this basically, um, they for whatever reason they need to go back to well, this padre or father. He needs to. He takes her. Um, this nun who hasn't yet taken her vows, they take, he's like, Hey, you need to come with me. But they don't really dive into what's the reason that she needs to come with them. Yeah. But he's like, Hey, you need to come with me and we need to go check out this like old, like building because we'd found a nun here that had hung herself and <clears> she's, <throat> like, she's dead. And so we need to go, you know, figure this out and also see if this place is still a holy place, you know, where God can reside. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not because it gets pretty dang dark pretty quick. But I found myself like laughing. These scares were so stupid and like so predictable. Like he looked one direction then he turned around and then it'd be right there. Of course. Like, yeah. The, it was, it Your was sad. Typical jump scares. Yeah. And like, even like when you actually discover everything else, it wasn't all that great. Do you remember like the um, Underworld series? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How or like those moments where they're like they're struggling and they're trying to like kill somebody and they can't. You know what I mean? Like where you had that moment where, yeah, it was it was horrible. There's this. I don't even care if I spoil it. There's this scene where because they find this amulet that supposedly has the blood of Christ in it and she's being choked and being killed. Wow. She's being drowned like by this this nun. And she somehow gets it out of the vial, and because they make reference to this from the beginning, that like the townspeople will spit on the ground to ward off evil. So she somehow gets the blood of Christ in her mouth, and then spits it on this nun, and that's what ends up killing her. And it was, it wow. was so stupid. It was like the dumbest movie I've seen in a long time. I was, I was. Very much so disappointed. Which is interesting because the the previews looked pretty good. Yeah. Yes. The, the previews made it look like really interesting and like um, you didn't know where it was going to – no, it was – Like they were pulling previews off uh, off online because they were deemed too scary. Mm -hmm. And it was terrifying. Yeah. I saw one of the previews in theaters and I was pretty – It was scary. scary. Yeah. yeah. You actually see the movie though? No, not no, the case not at all. You'll you'll laugh. You'll find yourself like laughing. How many people do you think should see this movie? Uh, <laughs> None. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like I'm waiting for. I, I, was, I was like, wondering where you were going. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. I got it as soon as you said it. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Um, out of five nuns, or no, let's go with crosses. Out of five crosses, because that kind of plays a part. Um, I'm saying that like. 
maybe one stick, like a half a. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was half a star. Half a star. None stars. <laughs> None. <laughs> Keep going. You're on a roll. <laughs> no, probably like maybe one. There was a couple of like all right. It was kind of cool architecturally. Like the building was kind of cool. So maybe one. That that's what stood out the architecture uh, of the building. I love yeah, the sets. Wow. Yeah, the sets. Well, okay. There's also the lighting guys. Were amazing. <laughs> well, there's this other <laughs> Just part because of the where <laughs> these guys are so stupid. He follows this person. He sees all these all these crosses, and he goes into this graveyard and just starts following this creepy ass nun that's walking around. And he's like, "Oh, hey, come back here, come back here." Oh, I'm like, oh. You know what? The Don't studio follow. won though. Don't follow. Because you bought a movie ticket. I saw it for free. X96 oh. gave me a coupon that said, like, here, you can see, you know, you and a guest can go see this movie So for X96 free. actually bought the ticket. Boom. So they still won. Eh. Yeah. X96 really lost. No. Yeah. They, they were giving away because we were at our tent event in Layton. And mm. they were just like, hey, do you want this ticket? Like, okay, right. so here's the real question. <coughs> if, let's say, I was given the opportunity to go see this movie for free, mm -hmm. would you recommend it? If you haven't already seen all the other good movies in the, the... This was like the last one. So it's worth the time it takes to see a movie, is what you're saying. Mm, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty low down on there, but... Okay, okay. I don't know. If you like the... the No, I wouldn't even say if you like The Conjuring, because The Conjuring was like way better. <laughs> like there are so many stipulations on it. <laughs> no. it's like, I'm yeah, gonna sign a contract. There's no other good movies, or if you've seen all the good movies, or if you <laughs> like The Conjuring, if you have some time, or <laughs> if your time is literally worth nothing, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing else to do. Go see The Nun. Okay, right, that answers my question. Thank right. you yeah. for your time. You're, you're very welcome. Um, so I, I saw another film. Yes, uh, a simple favor. I'm hoping this one's a little bit better. It is. Uh, I saw your other review and your post about like the director. Yep. Yeah, liking. I got a, I got a like from the from the director. That's legit. Were yep. you like okay? Were you kind of a little bit like hoping at least one of them would say yeah. something or like it? Yeah. Just because like I was just really kind of funny because you're just like hey at Emma Kendricks, you know, forty seven yeah. or whatever. And yeah. Well, because I said I saw a simple favor starring at. Anna Kendrick and at Blake Lively. It was their, you know, accounts directed by at Paul Feig, mm -hmm. and Paul Feig liked my tweet. So, yeah, yay! Uh, Wasn't quite the person I was hoping would like uh, my tweet. Anna Kendrick, but, she uh, did. Oh my heck! Yeah. So yeah, simple favor. Um, as as I said, the stars Anna Kendrick, Blake Lively, um, and it's it's about uh, Anna Kendrick's character. Uh, is a single mom who does these mommy blogs mm -hmm. online. And the way that she meets Blake Lively's character is her son and Blake Lively's son are friends. And so they ask to have this play, know, date. play date. And so uh, Anna Kendrick ends up going over to, I don't even remember the character's names, so I'll just say the actress's names over to Blake Lively's place and they started talking and they ended up kind of becoming friends. Um, and then Blake Lively asks her for a simple favor, which was, will you pick up my son after school? I yeah. have to go out of town. And she was like, okay, that's fine. Then she disappears. Oh, wow. After that, you don't hear from her. You don't see her. Um, so she starts to kind of unwind, try to unwind this mystery of who this woman is uh, because she refuses to ever have her photo taken. Um, she's trying to, like, like lay off the radar or like, yeah. you know, stay low-key. And so she's trying to wonder why. And, and so <laughs> she's following all these little breadcrumbs and everything. And Is she blogging this the whole entire time? <clears throat> she is. On her mommy blog? She is. Yeah. And it's actually, it's interesting because that blog is kind of the reason he, that, yeah, oh, things start oh, to unravel. okay, that makes sense because unravel. she put her on, the, on there and then some bad people probably, like, saw it. Mm, not quite. Oh, dang it. I, I like where you were going, but that's yeah. not quite what happened. Okay. Um, but the the blog does come into play in, in a pretty big way. way. Yeah. So uh, it ended up being kind of this interesting kind of thriller. Um, also thriller slash comedy. Huh. 
which I would call a thromedy. Okay. Or a criller. I'm not sure which. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really interesting, and it's uh, really entertaining. It's... Um, and actually, the guy that was in Crazy Rich Asians, Henry Golding, is actually in this one. That one and this one are his only two films he's ever done. Oh, geez. Which is interesting. Yeah. And they're both out in theaters at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Lucky him. Right. Um, but anytime uh, I... Annie Kendricks is in a movie. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the reason I went and saw it in the first place. Because yeah. I'll see anything with her in it. Right. But anytime I don't realize that... Time has passed. You know, I don't pull out my phone. I don't mm-hmm. run to the bathroom. I don't, you like know. Like when you're watching, like, Iron Fist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm painfully aware of the time passing with Iron Fist. <laughs> yeah. But no, and, and anytime a movie can do that to where I'm fully engrossed in the story, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's, it blends comedy and thrills perfectly. Which is really difficult to do. Yeah. It, it makes these characters seem real, you know? Um, humanizes them. It, yeah, humanizes them, exactly. And so because of that, I would give this, I think I gave it on... Three and a half? Yeah, I think that's what I gave it mm-hmm. on Twitter, right? Yep. At WWG Podcast, shout out. Whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, three and a half. I think I gave it three and a half mommy blogs out of five. But it's really good. Okay. Um, it's a really good thriller, and uh, I think it's currently sitting like number two in the box office. Oh, geez, yeah. Under Predator, I think. Uh, which is crazy because Predator just <clears throat> barely, barely came out, though. Yeah. Well, so this, I think they came out at the same time. Oh, okay. Same weekend. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so if you're going to choose between the two, I would say go see a simple favor. Mm-hmm. You know. Are you going to probably go see uh, Predator? I might. I don't yeah. know. People aren't digging it, so. Hmm. But yeah, all right. Um, anything else you guys want to review? Um, to want to did you about? watch so, Atypical the second season yet? No, because of what I oh, was yeah. telling you guys about earlier. But um, at work, I have started watching uh, Star Wars Clone Wars because Very nice. of Fan X and that panel that we uh, watched together. Yes. Um, got me really interested in it, and it's really good. I'm it only is. a few episodes in right now, but I'm having a good time. It's a lot more cheesy than I thought that it would be. Like, yeah, it, it gets it's more playful. It, it gets I, I it gets say. darker as it goes, but yeah, it starts out especially cool. with kind of robot. Dark yeah, the ball. droids are, yeah. are <laughs> funny, but yeah, that's all I'll say about that. All right, well, good. I'm glad you're watching that. It's yeah, I, yeah. I did finish the. Second season of Atypical. That's why I'll wait for a review. Mm-hmm. Like for when you Just finish wait it. Just until October 1st and then I'll be able to talk about it. Okay. Perfect. We've also started uh, season two of Iron Fist. Yes. A couple episodes in. Mm-hmm. So far, it's better than the first season. It is. I would say. Is the choreography better? Yes. Um, as well as he doesn't seem quite so privileged. No, he doesn't. Right? As an entitled. He kind of like realizes, <clears throat> oh man, you know, I, or, well, because of his job to begin with, but then he also kind of. Um, is a lot more humble, mm-hmm. which is nice. And it seems like that actor, I forgot his name, um, got acting lessons mm-hmm. from season one to two, right? so that's good. Yeah. Because he's, he's a lot better of an actor in this one. So anyway. well, he also had the Defenders to help him out. Right? That's true. So yeah, I'm, I'm two episodes in. So far, so good. I uh, should be able to make it past episode six. Hopefully. <laughs> that's Still, I've done that with The Punisher or um, Luke Cage season two. Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. I finished both seasons of those. Okay. Yeah. Um, they need another um, Daredevil. It's coming. Actually, I think it's coming out in October. Oh, awesome. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, let's talk about Fanix. Fanix. Facts. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Salt Lake Thanks. Thanks um, for having us. So oh, first we have to before we even get into this, I think that we have to say like thank you so very much to Brandon. Brandon, yes, Brandon Yushio over on the Fandom Podcast. Uh, he hooked us up with some passes, some press passes. Yeah, um, we he got go, he he goes above and beyond for us every yes, single time. Does. We got the last two press passes. Why we couldn't get three because mm-hmm. there's liter- literally only two left. Yeah, so he got us the last two. It was totally awesome. Uh, 
yeah, can't can't say thank you enough to, right. to Brandon. But <laughs> um, unforeseen events happened this uh, that weekend. I was extremely sick on Thursday. Yeah, could not get out of bed. That's how ill I was. So you ended up AJ going by yourself, right? Which it, it's it felt like you a little bit of the same where you first kind of take it all in. Yeah, you know that's like that that's the day the initial day that you go and you check out everything and just kind of walk over. But it was really kind of neat because um, I wanted to talk to a couple other celebrities, but their lines were pretty long. But I did get to um, talk to um, Daily. What's her bucket? E.G. Daily. E.G. Daily. Thank you. Um, which was really pretty neat. And she's like way down to earth. And she is. Yeah. Funny. Like I started following her on Instagram because of that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It was kind of cool. Um, went through, um, went to, who did I see? There was a couple other different um, people that I went to. But mainly it was just kind of like to take it all in so that the other two days could be more spent um, doing more podcasting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then so Friday, uh, I didn't. I did end up going. So it was AJ and I. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when we got the bulk of our stuff done. That's when we got pretty much all of our interviews which we will play after this episode. Um, I'll have them all. I'll have, they're only like a couple minutes each. So, But the interviews we did get were um, that you'll hear are Lorraine Newman, one of the original cast members of Saturday Night Live, which She's is pretty cool. She's one of the cool. Coneheads. Mm-hmm. Um, we in Loathing in Las <clears throat> Vegas as well. Uh, Greg Sipes. Um, voice actor. Look, here's the thing. We got a lot of voice actors. Oh, we did. For a couple reasons. One, they'll usually 98% of the time say yes when you ask them for an interview. Have we been turned down by a voice actor? Uh, Colton and I Technically. were. Oh, really? Saturday. Mm-hmm. We got, we weren't Not turned down. Not by an actor, but by his handler. Yeah. Okay. We weren't turned down by Freddie Prince Jr., but his handler turned us down. Oh, so. okay. But yeah, um, so. He experienced... That, that the yeah the turn down so we we also talked to greg sipes who you'll know as beast boy from teen titans he was also michelangelo in the 2012 tmnt cartoon we also talked to charlie adler now charlie adler's interview was interesting yeah. because he just we start recording and he just went right for it oh yeah um now, Charlie Adler, you'll know as Cow and Chicken from the cartoon Cow and Chicken. You'll know him as Buster Bunny from Tiny Toons. You'll know him as, uh, oh, my brain just went dead. So many things. He was in a lot of things. So we talked to him. We talked to Anna Graves and James Arnold Taylor. James Sp- Arnold Taylor. He was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really Speaking of Clone Wars, mm-hmm. he was uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. In, mm-hmm. in the Clone Wars cartoon. And then Anna Graves was also um, in Clone Wars. She was uh, Satine, um, who comes along later in the series. And then we talked to Kevin Sorbo, mm-hmm. who you'll know is mainly as Hercules yeah. from the old TV show. He was pretty cool. Pretty nice guy. He was well, really nice. And then we talked to E.G. Daly, mentioned before, uh, who you know is best as Tommy Pickles. Mm-hmm. And as uh, Buttercup from Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. And then Colton and I talked to Barry Bostwick mm-hmm. from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, we, How was that? It was, it was all right. It was all right. We joked around with him a mm-hmm. little bit. He gave us a hard time at first. He did. Yeah. He's like, he's kind of like, why do I want to talk to you? Yeah. Give me a reason. Can you, where's your credentials? Yeah. Pretty, <laughs> pretty much. much. Did pretty you much. pull out your card? Yeah. Get yeah. my card. And he said, and he kept it? I think so. He looked at it and he said, how many people listen to you? And, and I'm like, like, we don't mm. want to answer that. So he's like, just make up a number. So we're like, oh, thousands. Oh. Millions of people Everybody, listen to us. All Everybody them. listens to us. Yeah. I would have just gotten with like, oh, we have like 11, you know, 11,000 downloads. Yeah. Boom. That's true. Well, we do. We don't have to tell them how long we've been doing this. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. We've been going for a month. 11,000 downloads. <laughs> 11,000 yeah. downloads. It's amazing. But so, yeah. So he was pretty cool. So those are all the interviews we got. Uh, and, and I'll tack those on right at the end of the episode so you can listen to those. Um, like I said, they're only a couple minutes each, so it'll go by pretty quick. So, yeah, so Friday, that's when we did most of our interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Did we see? Did we see any panels? We saw we did, two of them. We saw Amy Jo Johnson, yeah. which was hmm. Chuck Norris. Hmm. And Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Norris, <laughs> right? Okay, let's talk about Chuck Norris for a second. Yeah. So we walked into his panel. I think three quarters of the way in. Well, it was kind of funny because everybody was going in for it, and it was getting towards the end, and we just kind of like whipped out our press passes and, yeah. and got in there. So, so we get in there, and like I said, it's three quarters of the way in, and. The interesting thing is with his panel. See, most most people with these panels, you'll have a moderator that's there, and mm-hmm. then the other person, the celebrity, sitting down at the table and just talking, having right. a conversation, kind of back and forth. Yeah, back and forth. Chuck Norris <laughs> <laughs> had a paper, and he was basically, as well as he had his wife up on stage. Yeah, as well, he was reading off uh, pretty much bullet points of of his life. Yeah, yeah. Which but, was, and he, he and they, they would even ask him a question, and then he'd say, "Which reminds me of this fight when and I was go fighting back this person." To, and then yeah. he'd go back to wherever he was on last on the page. So it happened. What I figured out was he Alzheimer's, maybe dementia. But he had talked to the the moderator beforehand and said, "These are the or his wife probably did. These are the points we want to hit. This is what we're going to talk about. Don't deviate from that." Oh, so when he, the moderator is trying to... Uh, so the moderator was moderator. like, oh, what about your fight with Bruce Lee? You met him, right? And then you saw him pull out the paper and looks like, yeah, so... And it's like he was reading it right off the paper. Verbatim. Verbatim, yeah. right off the paper. And so we were looking at each other like, is Chuck Norris okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, I actually... Because he seemed like, a little out of it. He did. I do think he's probably got about five to ten more years yeah. in him, unfortunately. Maybe a little, a little dementia setting in there. Yeah. yeah. One too many punches to the head. You That's know. what I'm thinking. And then they they um, talked about his, right as they were leaving, they are like, oh, make sure to buy this, what was it, sea water or something? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. The Sea Force. Sea Force. Mm-hmm. That's his water. Yes, available at Maverick, and they made sure to plug that. Only yeah. Maverick. Yes. It's the only uh, place you can buy it. Yep. Adventure's first stop. Well, I mean, drink it. Chuck Norris's first stop, <laughs> and probably his last. <laughs> probably he dies in Maverick, <laughs> and then they just have him sitting there with like some of his water, holding a bottle of all the water. Yeah, you know, what else would he have <laughs> with his cowboy hat? Yeah, full, full circle. circle. Full. Oh, boom! Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Um, so then the panel, because we went in to see a Power Rangers panel. And what it was going to be was Amy Jo Johnson and Jason David Frank, the original green and pink Power Rangers, they are going to talk about the 25th anniversary and kind of go through a whole retrospective type of yeah. thing. And which would have been more interesting because it would have. he's kind of an interesting character. Well, because Jason David Frank has embraced the whole Power Rangers oh, lifestyle. Has. Yeah, and he like knows all the different episodes. And he does. And if you ask him any questions about it, he'd be like, he'd have an opinion on it. Yeah, he's all about it. Amy Jo Johnson, on the other hand... She was trying to use it more to like catapult her career. Yeah. Admitted that she had really never seen an episode of Power Rangers. Yeah. Which was great. I'm glad we're here. Yeah. And that was the panel that we happened to be at on the front row. Right? Very front row. Because well, we were walking up there and we were trying to find a spot. And then we were, um, I was like, oh, well, is this section for press? You know? And then right then they said, uh, everybody just move up. You know, we want to fill this place. Yeah. So we were, we were right there. Yeah. And so that panel, yeah, that panel kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that very last panel of the night, but for some reason they're not great. Because there was one I went to, it was Famke Jansen, mm-hmm. and hers was the same way. It's like right. people tried to ask her questions, and she was so dismissive of it. Mm-hmm. Just like she even Johnson cut down was. a couple. Of, she cut down on people a couple of people when they'd ask a question. They were like, "Hey, thank you so much for being here. Like, it's a pleasure to talk to you." Um, my my question, and she was just like, "Meh, I don't want to talk about this. I want to talk about this." Yeah, and then she'd just be like, "Oh, I I wrote a song about how she, who was it that she wanted to be like?" Uh, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Yeah, this was like a depressing like song. It was. And yeah. It was. I mean, I know she wrote it when she was like younger, but she's just like, "I want to make people smile like Julia Roberts." Yeah. I, yeah. Keep going. Was, uh, she did. <laughs> she did <laughs> like three or four verses. She went on dude. for like two minutes. Yeah. I'm like, well, all right. And then like the guy kind of tried to cut her off to be like, "All right, let's continue on." And she sang another verse. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, because people were there to ask her about Power Ranger questions. Right. Because that's what she's best known for. It's not an Amy Jo Johnson interview. No. It's a Power Rangers interview. It's a Power Rangers panel. Yes. Yeah. And so people were trying to talk to her, and and she was basically, her default answer was, well, you know, I don't really remember, or I don't really know, 
or it's been so long and I've never seen, I've never actually seen an episode or, or the new, like when they're talking about it, like continuing on today yeah. and she's like, seen I don't it know. I've, I've never watched it. It's like, then why the heck are you here? Yeah. Like for the money? That's yeah. what it seemed like. Mm-hmm. It really did. Anyway. She just wants to get her song out there. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a couple of albums. She does have a couple albums, which she plug. made sure to plug Yeah, on her website. And they're available at Maverick as well. Yeah, right next to Sea Force. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty much Friday. We got a lot of pictures, a lot of interviews, did a lot of stuff on Friday. Mm-hmm. Then Saturday rolls around, and it was me and, me and Colton there. You got hung up with a few things, mm-hmm. and it turns out, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll say this now, I need you there. Oh, yeah? I do. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you why, because... Going through the crowds? Well, that, but also, if we're going to do interviews, I'm an extreme introvert. You're so right. outgoing. Yeah. And you're- Yes. I'm like, all right, let's You'll just jump do this. in there yeah, and start you'll going. go get people. You know? See, yeah. you're you're more of an extrovert, and so yeah. you can get us to the table. Yeah. So once I'm at the table, I'm good. Right. I'm fine. Yeah. It's a matter of getting there. Mm-hmm. And I was just the camera guy. <laughs> Pretty much. And so Saturday kind of ended up being kind of a bust, to be perfectly honest. Um, I mean, we did talk to Barry Bostwick, and we tried to talk to Freddie Prince Jr., but he turned us down. His handler turned us down. Mm. I mean, He seemed like a great guy. Yeah, he seemed like a really cool guy. <laughs> And so, yeah, Saturday kind of ended up being a bus. I mean, Colton wasn't there the whole time. He had to leave. Mm-hmm. And so I was pretty much just there by myself. So I was like, well, and being the introvert I was, I was like, yeah, I'll just go to the grand ballroom and just sit and just watch panels. Yeah. Which is what I did. Oh, nice. Did you catch any good ones? Um, I saw Twisted Tunes. Okay. Which what? is one of the only reasons I ever go to this convention. Oh, yeah. Um, what did they do this time? Beauty and the Beast. Oh, wow. Okay. Like what scene or what? Um, well, they did it before a year ago, and so they were kind of continuing on mm-hmm. with the story. And so they were like halfway through the through the movie. Yeah, so the, the people that were there, there was a lot. There was Jess Harnell, James Arnold, James Arnold Taylor, Anna Graves. Um, oh, shoot. Who else was there? Um, was Freddie Prince Jr. there? In a panel or for the for the the, the, the tunes, twisted tunes twisted tune. panel, I can't remember if he was, uh, but there was a there was a lot of people, and I love going to that twisted tunes because they take a script from a from a movie and then they read it as different characters, as different cartoon characters. So with Jess Harnell, you'll get like Wacko Warner and reading like you know, Back to the Future, reading Marty McFly, Back to the Future. It's great. It's probably the biggest panel in the convention. Oh, they yeah, yeah. they pack it out every single time. Front to back, it is full. I think the first time they did it, they didn't think it was going to be as big as it was. No. Yeah. It was actually supposed to be like upstairs. Mm-hmm. And there was like a line out the door. And they're like, oh, we got to move this. Yeah. So they, re- they realized that Utah really likes cartoons, apparently. Mm. Go figure. So, yeah. So I saw that one. I saw Brent Spiner. I saw his panel. That was pretty good. Um, and then I just kind of just kind of walked around. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't bad for me because I, yeah. I liked it. Did but you it pick was, up any swag or no, merchandise or anything? No, I didn't. But it was, it was not good as far as, like, the podcast goes because I didn't do much for the podcast. Yeah. And as far as the press goes and, and that sort of thing. So keep that in mind in the future. Yes. I need you there. All right. Deal. All right. But uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It's always fun. Um, so, yeah. But, Colton, I want to get your perspective, because I think that's the first time you've been there, right? Mm-hmm. So, I know you weren't there very long, but what, what's kind of your thoughts on that whole thing? Well, he picks the busiest day, right? Yeah, busiest day. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot to take in. And there were a lot of people there, especially when it started getting later in the afternoon. Um, it was kind of overwhelming. Like, when, because I got there probably about an hour before you did. Yeah. And I got into the convention and I didn't even do anything. I just sat and waited in the entrance because I didn't want to do anything because it was pretty overwhelming. Right. And I wanted to wait until someone who had experience with right. this got there and could. <laughs> 
you know, you're, show you're me the ropes. You're like a ball, you know, in the corner, like <laughs> um, rocking back and forth. I will say there's a lot of cosplay. Yes. There's a lot of really good cosplay, there and there's a lot of really bad cosplay. Did it seem like there was less this year, though? There was more on Saturday. Okay. Friday, there wasn't much. No. But no. Saturday, there was quite a bit. Okay. No, it was good. There's a, like, when it comes to the merchandise that's available there, there's a lot of the same. A lot of paintings, a yep. lot of those uh, figurines with the big heads, whatever they're called. Pops? Yeah. The, yeah, the pops. Funko pops, yep. A lot um, of those. A lot of swords. I feel like he's not nerdy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's... I, I don't think I'm the right kind of nerd. <laughs> you know? <laughs> For the convention. There's different types, like... If it was a gaming convention, yeah. that's something that I would really be into. They I do like have that. that. And they actually have, like, uh, tabletop solid, games. Solid Gaming Con. Right yeah. There. So, yeah. Which I think you'd really like. They mm-hmm. have a ton of tabletop games and tons of, like, video games, computer games, everything. Game yeah, related. next time that comes around, we'll have to see if we can get press for that. Yeah. I think you'll probably enjoy that mm-hmm. one more. I mean, I still had a really good time. I I think the panels were my favorite part, um, the two that we did see. Oh, yeah. You and I saw... Um, Ian McDermott mm-hmm. played the Emperor mm-hmm. Alpatine, and what was the other one we saw? And then it was the the Clone Wars one, the with oh yeah, the Star Wars one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Star with Wars Freddie panel. Prince Jr. and Anna and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that one was cool. That one was fun. Yeah, it was just nice to just to see them talk as people. Yes, and you know, and talk about things that happened in the show and things that they're doing now. I really want to do the get watch the Geghead stuff that mm-hmm. happens on Twitch. Um, so I think I'll do that. But, I mean, it got me watching Star Wars Clone Wars. Yeah. Well, it was interesting to to see uh, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. Because, I mean, we grew up in an era where he was a pretty big star there for a while. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Back in the in the late 90s. And he kind of, kind of fizzled out a little mm-hmm. bit. Or did, like, we just didn't see him because he was behind the camera. Or doing yeah, well, voice acting. Yeah, and, and now he's he's doing mainly voice acting. He calls himself a stay at home dad. And I think he said this was like the second or third convention he's ever the done. Second. Second, yeah, oh, wow. he's ever done. And so it was cool to kind of see hear him talk about his experiences and, and that sort of thing. That was that was yeah. pretty cool. And he seemed like just a normal, genuine guy. Mm. Seemed really cool. Kind of your typical California surfer dude mm-hmm. really that's how he sounded and a yeah. huge star wars nerd oh yeah oh that's yeah, way fun. yeah um so yeah so that, that was fun hopefully um next year rolls around we'll be able to do press again and we'll do more hopefully i won't get sick mm-hmm. and uh we'll get a lot more done but even still we we did a lot and it was it was cool so all right um i think that's it right mm-hmm. that's, that's it. all we had all right well, here's where you can find all of our episodes. You can find it at worldwarg.podbean.com. We're also on cosmicpotato.com, um, which we did an episode of Captain Game Show, which you can find at Cosmic Potato or on our feed. Uh, we're also on iTunes and Google Play. Just search World War G. You can find us on Facebook at World, uh, World, excuse me, World War G Podcast. Facebook.com slash World War G Podcast. You know, I don't do this for a week, and I, my groove gets thrown yeah. off. <laughs> We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at WWG Podcast. Um, and actually, on Instagram, I would suggest following us personally instead of the podcast itself, because we do a lot more with our personal pages. Um, you can also find all of our merchandise, all of our shirts and whatnot at shop.spreadshirt.com slash World War G. Uh, we're also, you can email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. Oh, really quick. We're coming up on episode 200. Yes. Now, episode 200, I think we're planning on, we're not going to have really anything prepared. We're just going to sit here and we're just going to basically have a conversation, mm-hmm. right? So, what we need from you guys who are listening, go to our email at worldwgpodcast at gmail.com and send us questions that you want us to answer. We're going to do like an Ask Me Anything segment. Yeah. So, any question you want answered, oh, geek-related or not, it doesn't. maybe there's some burning question you've wondered about us. Troy's um, time in jail. How'd I end up in jail? Yep, that's one. <laughs> uh, yeah, send it to our email. 
Um, and you have till episode 200 to do that. So um, you can also call or text the show at 385-240-1692. So this has been World War G episode 190. That has been Adrian. That has been Troy. And I've been Colton. Stay geeky, my friends. Get this recording here, okay? All right, we are here with Anna Graves and James Arnold Taylor, um, both voice actors. So, as voice actors, what are the pros and cons of recording separately in a room and recording all together? Because I know that happens occasionally. Yeah, well, with the Clone Wars, we recorded together for the most part. I think most of the time we were together. And the beautiful thing of that is if you want to ad-lib, change it up, you know, kind of take something a little farther, you can do that a lot easier when the other actor is there. Yeah, I don't know, what no, and I totally agree. I, I feel like I got a lot spoiled, not a little, a lot yeah. spoiled with the Clone Wars because yeah. we were able to take each scene uh, two or three times. And each time you do it, you do it differently. And, and, and each scene has an arc. So the episode has an arc as an episode, but each scene has an arc and an ebb and a flow. And you really do get to, to work off of each other that way. It's great. Okay. Yeah, but now when you're alone, it, it's faster, yeah. <laughs> and so you get in and out a little quicker. Um, sometimes you can uh, kind of communicate things with the director, maybe a little bit more, I suppose, to get more of that time, because what happens when we come together, especially like this row of all these actors here, we're all kind of goofballs, yeah. and we, we have a tendency <laughs> to go mean? on and on and on, and so... It takes a long time just to get through a script because we're just having such a good time. Trying to wrangle everybody in or yeah, whatnot. That's the director's job usually. Yeah. So yeah, it takes a while. But that's the only con, I guess, to right, it. Right, right. Yeah. And depending on how much time you have to record, and depending on, I mean, the director always knows what he or she wants. Yeah. And they know when they get the take that they want. So they might not need you to do it three times. And uh, we rely heavily on them knowing what the final product will be. They really have the, the full picture uh, in their brains. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so I know you guys have done not just TV shows, but you've done um, the voiceover for film, uh, video games. Is there a particular project of those that would consider your favorite? Oh, you know, I try to make whatever I'm doing at the time my favorite. I really do because I'm so blessed to do what I do. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I wanted to be a voice actor since I was four years old. So I just really love any of it. So if I'm doing Obi-Wan Kenobi, well, then Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite. If I'm doing Jedi Master Plo Koon, then it's him. Uh, if I'm doing Johnny Tess, who's 11 years old and totally awesome, then he's my favorite. Fred Flintstone, he yeah, ever never do. He's my favorite, too. So it just depends. And uh, I just, I always say a little prayer of thanks that I'm doing what I'm doing when I'm on a microphone. Yeah. As far as video games go, I love characters that I don't just have to go in and bang it all out in four hours. And because it's so tight and there's so much going on, I love the games where you get to go back and work on multiple sessions for multiple days over multiple weeks and you really get to flesh out the character. You go on this journey with them. This is a very involved game. Uh, and the most recent one that I just did is the sequel that's coming out for Metro. And I was really able to uh, get inside the head of that character and what she's going through and, and uh, going on this journey with her husband. And it's a, it's a great game. So that's my favorite. Any, any sorts of like charities or other projects that you guys would like to plug that you're working on? Um, well, you know, I, uh, we certainly love what the uh, 501st and all of the, um, the garrisons, uh, the Mandalorian mercs that are here, and uh, yes. the Rebel Legion, of course, I'm, I'm partial to. And we love all of the charity they do and certainly support that. Personally, I uh, support adoption because I adopted my daughter. So uh, international adoption is a big thing for me. And uh, World Vision as well. And so, uh, yeah, those are that. And then my website is jamesarnoldtaylor.com. You can check that out. And it has links to everything there, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that. <laughs> Which I have all that. I have. And for me, I'm uh, an animal lover. I love uh, the Best Friends organization. I and NKLA is is No Kill LA, uh, back where I'm from in Los Angeles. But the No Kill. Uh, movement, I believe, is so important to stress how much people need to adopt animals versus buying them and shut down all the mills. Um, I also uh, really, really teach my kids. My kids um, are very disturbed by homelessness, so we try to d uh, 
do different things for different charities. So most recently, we the Midnight Mission in Los Angeles was one that really helps people get back on their feet, and um, we were really impressed with them. But uh, but as James said, everything with Make a Wish and the Five Hundred First, and all, I mean everybody, we uh, we love it and support it. Okay. And then one last question, and we'll get out of here. Um, in your favorite voice that you like to do. Uh, what is your favorite, we've been asking everybody, your favorite breakfast food? Well, I'll do Obi-Wan Kenobi. I feel it's appropriate. Yes, yes. I like to go to the Jedi Temple early, you know, before all those, like Anakin, he comes in and it's a mess. So I go in early and I might have a little, um, oh, vegan eggs benedict with a little tofu, a little hollandaise sauce. Healthy much? <laughs> and as the Duchess Satine, I would say exactly what I had for breakfast this morning. French toast and chicken sausage. <laughs> well, you should know that your favorite breakfast food is the same as Kevin Sorbo's. Uh -huh. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we are here with Barry Boswick. You famously know from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Right. Now, speaking of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, we have Meatloaf is here, Tim Curry is here. What is it about this movie that has resonated with so many people for so many years? Fun. Just fun. People have a great time. It's a party. They go to the theater, and if they're fortunate enough to have a shadow cast there, that raises the amplification of the, of the fun and the... Uh, just goofing around and it's a great place to get stoned fair enough and then question we've been asking everybody favorite breakfast food uh, favorite breakfast food French toast perfect just like Kevin Sorbo Kevin Sorbo likes French toast yep that was his favorite as well oh, okay I'm changing mine <laughs> uh, 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 probably some kind of a croissant with uh, an almond paste. Nice. Very nice. Well, thank you very much That's for your it. time. That's it. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Get on with okay. it. I'm old. I don't have a lot of time. How much do you bench press? How much do I bench? Yeah. Okay, you're not going to like the answer at all because the assumption is that the more weight you do, the bullshit. I don't do much weights at all. Okay. This is what I do. I work out five days a week. Yeah. All five of them are cardio. But what I do is I have a stupid, cheap-ass stationary bike that has absolutely no bells and whistles on it. <laughs> I think it was like 115 bucks at Big Five or whatever the hell, right? Yeah. And I had to put the pedals on and hoo hoo. And I set my timer for between 30 and 40 minutes, depending on the time I have. And I pedal my ass off, and while I do that, I have one, pa one pound, three pound, and five pound weights that I switch off from. And I do this, yeah. and I do these, and I do curls, and I do triceps while I'm pedaling. And it fries me. Then, for... This is quite the, the regiment here. Huh? I said this is quite the regiment here. Well, yeah. you want something, you got to work for it. Exactly. So, uh... There's a wonderful exercise that burns the hell out of your pecs, and it hurts like a mother. <laughs> and you do on an inclined, an inclined bench, and you pick a weight that you can comfortably, yeah. but not easily, comfortably do 10. And what you do is you, you fully extend out on the, on the incline. You press up. Now, any move up on this one, which breaks a lot of rules of working out. On this one, it's fast, it's called twitch muscles, okay. and then on the decline, you control a very slow decline. Now, this is where it gets tough. Yeah. You do 10. Then you hold it, not at the bottom where you're resting, right. just where it's causing you to shake a little bit. Yeah. So it's pulling on this. Then you do nine, okay. the same way. Oh, wow. Then you do eight the same way, mm -hmm. and you go all the way to one. Wow. So you're doing 55 yeah. presses. Kind of burnouts almost. You fry. Yeah. You fry. <laughs> Are you... And then you, you switch off. Then yeah. you do... And the most I press ever is 30 pounds on either side. Okay. Each, a dumbbell. Yeah. 
But I, I, I'm not a big fan of big waves, heavy waves. Okay. I like it. Well, that was a long ass answer. What else do you want to know? Um, <laughs> some of your favorite, some of your favorite voices, or how do you prepare for those? I don't prepare for anything. I just show up. Just show up. But show here's up why I can say that. I, I'm like a vending machine now. I can show up because I've been acting since I'm 15. I'm 62 in three weeks, yeah. and I know where it lives in me. I know how to. I know how, how to channel, produce it. Yeah. I know where it comes from. I'm always in a free fall, so it's always very exciting for me to act and have something new to act. Yeah. That's fun for me. Okay. So but my favorite ones, and so how do I prepare? I started preparing when I was 15. Yeah. And I keep preparing. <laughs> and I and I uh, took voice classes for years to prepare. Where, where and did I you sing study every day. Huh? Where did you take the voice classes? I had uh, singing classes. Okay. I had a singing teacher. So uh, I was doing theater at the time. And I will sing on my way to work and sing on the way home from work. It's called warming up and warming down. Yeah. So you don't get hoarse. So that's how I prepare. But the rest of it is the acting part, I just keep cranking. My favorite character was Cal. <laughs> and I love the red guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's legit. That's awesome. Oh, it hurts so good. <laughs> And then, um, okay, so do you have a favorite uh, breakfast cereal? Or no. No? I don't eat cereal. No? Carbohydrates. What's your, what's your favorite breakfast food? Okay, here's another strange thing. You want to hear this? It's very odd. Yeah. So every morning, and this is hard when I'm traveling. I have to really figure this one out. I take a handful of raw organic almonds. Now follow this because it's a pain in the ass, but okay. again, it's discipline. Yeah. I throw it into my ninja. I take about a half a cup of blueberries, I throw that in the ninja, I get organic apple juice and dump that in there, and then I have a thing, it's called dope. Okay. You can get it on Amazon, and it's a beet, beet juice, crystallized powder, and it's mixed with mangosteen, baobab, and I forget the fourth ingredient, and it has NO2, nitric oxide precursors, the NO2 opens the small capillaries of your body and opens up all Same the veins. Same with like blueberries and all those other All that stuff. Oh, and yeah. Antioxidants, anti-cancer. Watch, I'm going to drop dead as I leave here. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> oh, he was so healthy! <laughs> yes, he just told us everything that kept him alive. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. He was so young! No, he wasn't. So, put that in the blender. You pulverize the shit out of it. Yeah. So there's no big chunks of almonds. I drink that and then I follow that to get this with, it's a thing called reds and it's pulverized turmeric, and anti-inflammatory cinnamon. Uh, cherries? Sent out cherries, raspberries, dingleberries, all kinds of berries. <laughs> and then it's a spoonful in water. I chase it with, the, with that in water. Yeah. And then I chase that with espresso. Okay. And I am good. Yeah. When I tell you, if I do that at six in the morning, I am good till one in the afternoon. Wow. And I might have to have a handful of... Something else to, yeah. to keep you going. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, thank you so very thank much, you. man. Cheers. That was awesome. Thanks, thank guys. You. Who knew it was going to be health hour? Right? Really That's all right. I didn't get a chance to ask, like, or say his name to begin with. Because he just kind of, like, it was... Record this real quick. All right. So we are here with E.G. Daly. Nope. Oh, sorry about that. You'll know from, uh, probably most famous from Rugrats as Tommy, and also Powerpuff Girls as Buttercup. So I know you've done a lot of work behind and in front of the camera. Is there different preparations for each? Well, for voiceover, there's not a lot of preparation. There's just being in the studio, getting your script in front of you, and reading it, pretty much. Um, for acting, there's like getting in wardrobe, getting makeup, getting in hair. So they're both super fun. One's just a little more time commitment than the other, too. Okay. And um, one of the questions that we've been asking everybody is your favorite breakfast food. And if you wouldn't, if you would oblige me and answer is Tommy, that would be great. I really like eating Cocoa Puffs, but I'm not eating gluten anymore, so I can't. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much.
record this, hopefully we'll pick it up. We're going to be doing some amazing things here on stage. All right, so we are here with Greg Sipes, voice of Beast Boy, voice of Michelangelo, voice of a ton of others. Uh, first of all, who's this little guy here? This is my son, Wingman G. Sipes, the real-life Beast Boy. That's fantastic. Uh, I know you're kind of a big animal activist. Um, so what are some projects you have coming up? Everything I do is for the animals, yo. I'm Beast Boy. I live it. I love it. That's how I roll. And uh, I'm infinitely inspired. And it's nice to meet y'all. You too. One last question we're asking everybody. Favorite breakfast food? Uh, raw chocolate, vegan chocolate. Fantastic. Very nice to meet you. What are those yells for? We're trying to figure that out ourselves. Yeah, we were trying to figure that out. All right, so we are here with Kevin Sorbo. You know him, of course, from Hercules, a bunch of other projects. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming to Salt Lake. It's good to be back. It's been about three, four years since I've done the con, so. So, obviously people know you best from Hercules. Um, I know you've done Andromeda. You've done God's Not Dead. Uh, what are some projects you have coming up? I've got a movie called One Nation Under God. I'll be in theaters next year. I've got another one I just finished directing called uh, Miracle in East Texas. It stars myself with John Ratzenberger and Lou Gossett Jr. And then I've got one I'm filming right now in Oklahoma City. I just wrapped at 2 o'clock this morning to fly up here. Didn't wrap. I still got three weeks left to shoot. But uh, that one's called uh, The Mustard Seed. I've got um, a western we're going to start filming soon called uh, The Dead and the Dying up in Vancouver. And I've got a documentary that just opened yesterday called Bleeding Blue. Go to bleedingbluemovie.com. And it's a, uh, it's a pro look at what the police officers do for us in our country. All right. And then uh, last question we're asking everybody. Favorite breakfast food? Uh, French toast. Excellent. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. All right. Thanks. All right, so we are here with Lorraine Newman. Um, now, you were on Saturday, Saturday Night Live for a number of years. So I have to ask, is there a little bit of rivalry between Saturday, Saturday Night Live casts? Um, well, you have to ask the other people. I can only speak for myself, but no. No. Um, when people say to me, you guys were the best cast, <laughs> my feeling is that um, whatever cast was on when you were an adolescent, that's the best cast. Okay. And it, it's true because they've always had great people and they've always had great writers. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel a rivalry at all. Okay. And then I know you've done a lot of work in front of the camera, but you've also done a lot of work behind it doing voiceover. Is there a difference in preparing for a role if it's a voiceover as far as in front of the camera? Well, it's a different kind of preparation, but for me, you know, I absolutely read the scripts ahead of time. I rehearse what I'd like to do. Um, it depends on the show that you're doing. Sometimes the whole cast is together and it's like a radio play, which is so fun. Or, or other times you're just recorded by yourself. Yeah. Um, the preparation for on camera, I think it's only different because you have to be conscious of camera angles and hitting marks, sure. which is incredibly distracting. <laughs> So I absolutely prefer voiceover. Okay. And then one last question we're asking everybody, what is your favorite breakfast food? Um, bacon and eggs. Awesome. Excellent staple. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah.